This is a demo and video manual for the A envelope. This module here by Velectronic, uh, which is brilliantly designed. Uh, this video is sponsored by Velectronic, but uh, actually I approached them about doing it um, after my friend Bo Beats turned me on to this module because I just think it's so ingeniously put together uh, and I'm, I'm just more than happy to share about it. So let's dive in. The A envelope is a four channel envelope generator, uh, which you could also use as a modulation generator and even a trigger generator. Super useful for pretty much any envelope or LFO need you might have. But what really makes it special is that it's designed for polyphony, which uh, as you may know, uh, can be a challenge in modular. And the trick is the associated envelopes. That's what A envelope stands for. Uh, and we'll get to that in just a second. First, I just wanna start with an overview of this panel. Across the top here, you've got your four channel select buttons, so you can choose which one you're looking at, and then these four knobs are the attack, decay, sustain, and release controls for the currently selected envelopes. The module provides two outputs per channel. I've got the four normal outputs plugged in here. Underneath them, you actually have an inverted version of each envelope, um, so that's nice that it just gives you that. Handy for side chaining, that kind of thing. And then each uh, channel also has a test button. <laughs> So right from the module, I can fire my envelopes and make sure they're sounding how I want them to. Over here, where I have these other patch cables plugged in, those are the trigger inputs uh, for the four channels. And above them are four modulation inputs. And that is not per channel, that is per parameter. Um, so we'll dive into that a bit more later. Another four outputs here are the beginning and end of stage, B-E-O-S, outputs. Uh, so you can get a trigger or a gate at the beginning or end of each stage, attack, decay, sustain, release. Finally up here you have the loop mode button and here you have the activation mode button and I'll explain all of this uh, but now you have the panel overview so let's dive into how it all works. So if you want, each of the four envelopes can be set independently. I can choose channel one and move my envelope settings, channel two, have different settings, and so on. What's interesting is that you can group channels together in any combination, and I'm just going to uh, group all of them. So I'm gonna long press on one channel. Uh, it's blinking to show that that's the one I'm associating to other channels, and now I'm just going to tap all these other channels Press the blinking channel again to exit that editing mode, and now all the envelopes will have the same shared attack, decay, sustain, release parameters. So let's play a four note chord, and I can now shape all of the envelopes at the same time. you could have each voice have its own envelope shape. What I've been enjoying doing though is having the envelope shapes match across my four voices, but then have my four voices be quite different. So I've got a mix of analog and digital oscillators. Uh, they're going to different filters and each of them also has their own modulations. So I just think it's really cool to have independent timbre and modulation for every note that you're playing in a chord. It's also cool if we dial in a pluckier sound. Let's add a bit of reverb to this too. If I play a pattern with an odd number of notes, we end up cycling through which oscillator is matching up with each note, which creates a really nice effect. It's a lot more dynamic than just the same sound on every note.
Now, so far I've been adjusting the kind of standard envelope parameters, the attack, decay, and release time, and the sustain level. Um, now, if you tap any of these encoders, you can actually adjust a second parameter. So if I press sustain, I'm now adjusting the sustain time, uh, which only comes into play if you're using one of the looping modes. Um, so all of these now are set to time. And uh, one interesting thing about the A envelope is that as you adjust time, you actually go through four different stages of time adjustment. So it's really fine resolution. So you can see which stage you're in. If both LEDs here are lit up, you're adjusting kind of the longest time, which goes up to 20 seconds. And then as the LEDs light up one at a time or turn off, you're going into a lower and lower values. So right now we're looking at time on all knobs. If I press sustain, uh, that LED lights up green so you know you're adjusting the sustain level. If I click attack, decay, and release though, uh, these LEDs turn red, and I'm now adjusting the curve of those stages. So on each of them, I can adjust from logarithmic through linear to exponential. So very precise envelope control. Now, each of these stages can have a modulation assigned to it. Over here, we have the modulation inputs, attack, decay, sustain, release, and for each of them, um, you can choose if you want to modulate the time, or the curve, or um, in the case of sustain, the time or the level. We've got the same color scheme going on where green represents level and red represents curve. Now, depending on which one you have selected with the encoder, you can long press it and then adjust the input gain of that modulation. I'm gonna go to the uh, time mode and now I will long press there. The time LED starts flashing. I will change uh, the decay modulation input to be time. Just gonna turn off sustain for simplicity. Now if we bring in an LFO to the decay modulation input, you can hear that LFO modulating the decay time and I can attenuate it by up to five times. At 12 o'clock, it's uh, not changing the input signal at all. And then I can also amplify it by up to five times. Now, if I had these channels not associated, um, each channel could actually have its own different modulation input assignments. However, you have to bear in mind that there is only one modulation input per stage. So with this button not lit, it means uh, you're not looping. If it's orange, It's looping as long as the module is receiving a gate and you're in gate mode, which I'll explain in a second. And if it's red, then it's just constantly looping. This activation button is super simple. If it's not lit, then the selected channel responds to gates. If it's orange, then it responds to triggers. So gates will turn into triggers. Um, and then if it's red, it will uh, respond to triggers with the ability to re-trigger at any time. So let's say we're dealing with a longer envelope. I can uh, re-trigger that at any time. If I'm just in the single trigger mode, then the envelope has to finish. This release stage has to be done before uh, another trigger will activate the envelope. The final thing to show you here is the BEOS outputs, the beginning and end of stage outputs. So if we're in the edit mode, long pressing on a channel, we can now press on these encoders to uh, assign that functionality. A slow blink means there will be a pulse sent at the beginning of that stage. A fast blink means there will be a pulse sent at the end of that stage. And a solid LED means there will be a high gate for the duration of the stage. Beginning and end of stage outputs are some of the more esoteric signals that you deal with in modular, but they can have a lot of interesting uses. Uh, for instance, syncing your envelopes to other things, or uh, you could use one stage to trigger another of the envelopes and generate 
complex modulation that way. Um, it would even be a really interesting way to kind of try and come up with a rhythm by adjusting the envelope times um, and adjusting whether these are sending beginning or end of stage outs. And remember, if the channels are not associated, then multiple stages could be sending triggers from these outs at different times. So a very flexible envelope generator, use it as four separate envelopes or four associated envelopes for polyphony, um, or just use it as four channels of different kinds of functions. You know, you can create LFOs out of it. You can modulate those LFOs to create more complex LFOs. And then you've got these interesting beginning and end of stage trigger outputs um, and inverted copies of every envelope. That's the A envelope. I've been enjoying it so much and I just think it's so wonderfully designed. Uh, thanks again to Velectronic for sponsoring. Hope you enjoyed this video.